Getting wireless to work on VR headsets is tricky. It's a struggle because you really need the low latency that wires provide, otherwise you can get a jittery mess. This can cause people to feel motion sick. Headset makers could combat this through compression, but the experience may look like you're watching a 360p video and take you out of the experience in a different way. To fix this issue, HTC partnered with Intel and DisplayLink to deliver the Vive wireless adapter. Does it work? Let's find out. Normally, I've got my Vive set up to a mini ITX PC in the living room, but to get the wireless adapter working, you'll need a PC with a free PCIe slot so you can attach the sensor's 5G cable into your computer. This means that mini ITX rigs and gaming laptops are out of luck for the time being. To test out the accessory, I moved my Vive setup to my room and connected it to a PC that's equipped with a 5930K CPU on a Gigabyte X99 gaming motherboard, equipped with a GTX 1080 Ti along with 16GB of RAM. I attached the adapter, which comes with three truncated Vive cables, to a Vive that's equipped with a deluxe audio strap. The adapter will work with the vanilla strap as well, but you will need to spend an extra $60 to get an adapter for it to work on the Vive Pro. Once you've installed the PCIe card into the motherboard, you'll need to attach the sensor to it via a 6-foot coax-like cable, and ideally mount it on top of your monitor like a webcam. The wireless adapter isn't completely wireless as you do have a battery and its cable to contend with but there is a belt clip on it, which makes it easier to attach to pants, or you could just throw it in a pocket. Once you've got everything physically connected, you'll need to download the Vive wireless software. Initially, performance wasn't good for me, with it having latency compression issues. But the next day, I tried it, it just worked, and I haven't been able to duplicate its issues since. To test the feel and performance of the adapter, I played some of my favorite VR games that require a lot of movement. It was definitely freeing to play games like Creed and Super Hot VR without having to worry about stepping on a wire. And unlike other wireless solutions like TPCast, voice support works right out of the box with the Vive wireless adapter. Once the device was working, there wasn't a lot of noticeable latency or compression, which is a blessing considering I did see a lot of compression before when I checked the device out at last year's CES. I also didn't experience any issues with the adapter's sensor, as it did a good job of tracking me within the bounds of my lighthouse setup. In terms of longevity, the 10,000 milliamp battery afforded me roughly 2.5 hours of gameplay, which I think is more than enough for most user single play sessions. If that isn't enough for you, you could always purchase a second battery pack. And the good news is that the battery does support USB-C fast charging. While the battery pack does have 4 LEDs on it which indicate battery life, I do wish you got notifications when battery was getting low in game. Perhaps this is something that can be added in the future. On the bright side, the adapter is light, and since it's distributed toward the back of the headset, it doesn't make it feel front heavy. It does feel a little warm if I touch it with my hand while in use, but I personally never felt it burning the top of my head. At the end of the day, who is the Vive wireless adapter for? Well, if you're tired of tangled cables or worrying about stepping on them, then this solves that problem. With minimal lag and compression, the device does work as advertised and pushes VR towards a wireless future. You just have to ask yourself if you think that's worth $300. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. Thanks.